so far, everyone's chosen a really brilliant, uplifting Psalms. And you know what I've done? I've chosen one of the most miserable Psalms in the whole book of Psalms. In fact, it's so bad, we've not shown you the end of the Psalm. Because the end of the Psalm is all about bashing babies against rocks. <laughs> so it really is a bad one. But it's a, a psalm that has always, throughout my whole Christian life, it's a, I can see this vividly in my mind when I read it. It's about God's chosen people in exile. Because of years of relentless sin, and they're turning the backs on the Lord their God, they had been sent into exile. The prophets had perpetually warned them to repent or else endure this calamity of 70 years exile in Babylon, over 500 miles away from Jerusalem, their center of worship at Solomon's temple, which was now destroyed and desecrated. So Tom, can we have the psalm now, please? Beside the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept as we thought of Jerusalem. We put away our harps, hanging them on the branches of poplar trees, for our captors demanded a song from us. Our tormentors insisted on a joyful hymn. Sing us one of those songs of Jerusalem. But how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a pagan land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget how to play the harp. May my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I fail to remember you, if I don't make Jerusalem my greatest joy. Thank you, Beth. So here we have God's chosen people. You notice their position, they are sat by the river. That could be the river Tigris, or it could be the river Euphrates, or it could be many of the irrigation channels that was in Babylon at the time. They were sat down in Inez Reis, in Israel, even today, for prayer and worship, you always stand. But they were sat by the river. They had put their harps or lyre, which was not like the big harp you see in the proms. This is a small handheld harp, more like the Welsh harp. And they'd hung it on the poplar trees by the river. If you hang a harp, my son who is a musician says, if you hang a harp in the Babylonian heat, the first things that will happen is the strings will break and then the harp itself will warp. So that instrument of praise becomes totally useless. And they were asked, by the Babylonians who loved to listen to exotic music from all people they'd captured from all over the place, but they could not sing a song of praise to the Lord their God. These people had totally lost the ability of praise. Trevor, your testimony this morning was absolutely superb i just cannot imagine going to hospital to see your son in that condition but you did exactly the right thing on the way to hospital you lifted jesus christ high and time you got there you were prepared for what you had to do so in the misery of their situation in captivity, they had laid aside their, their whole praise 
and they mourn in self-pity for Jerusalem and their temple. I too want to say a testimony now. Beth and I were married in 1974. And at that time, I was farm manager for an American research company doing chemical trials on cereals and fruit trees. We lived on site in the original farmhouse, just having a lounge and a bedroom to ourselves. We shared the rest of the house with four doctors of science and other staff during the working week. <coughs> And often, uh, and these often appeared at weekends. And on many, many occasions, the American company forgot English timing, so the phone would go off in the middle of the night. Bet worked in the laboratories with quite dangerous chemicals. And there, the company had absolute minimum safety consciousness. Being just married, we had no real privacy at our own. Although the marriage was good, we both became quite depressed. At that time, it was the movement of the Holy Spirit, known as the charismatic renewal. Amazing teaching, which both Bet and I still practice today. And part of that teaching was praising Jesus in all circumstances. So we had to force ourselves to praise verbally, to dance and rejoice ourselves out of this depression. Praising Jesus in all circumstances is not to twist God's arm, but to declare him Lord of the situation, just like Trevor did on that journey, Trevor and Joy did on that journey to the hospital. They were declaring Jesus Lord of the situation. And they, and what you're doing, you are putting your problems onto his shoulders. The government is on his shoulders and you're putting the government of your life upon his shoulders. Since then, we have endeavored to praise Jesus for everything good or bad. This should not be not just a short-term measure. This, as Trevor said, then became part of his life and also became embedded with our, within our lives. It's a bit like, just like the word Blackpool in a stick of Blackpool rock. It goes right the way through the stick of rock. Some people find it very difficult to praise for what appears to be evil things. But by praising him, we are putting our total trust into him. We put again, putting the burden on his shoulders. If we keep the burden on our shoulders, it will always lead to anxiety. We well remember the day that going coming back from Gloucester Hospital when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and coming home heavy hearted. Once again, it was an act of our wills to praise Jesus and it's not always easy. So to conclude, praising Jesus is not a short term memory for one's ills. It's a way of totally putting our trust in Jesus for whatever is perfect, whatever his perfect will is for us. I'm going to ask Bet to read some verses from a very old hymn. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awakening cries. May Jesus Christ be praised. Alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair. May Jesus Christ be praised. Be this when day is past, of all my thoughts the last. May Jesus Christ be praised. The night becomes as day when from the heart we say, May Jesus Christ be praised. 
the sadness fill my mind, a solace here I find. May Jesus Christ be praised. With evil thoughts molest, with this I shield my breast. May Jesus Christ be praised. Be this while life is mine, my canticle divine. May Jesus Christ be praised. Be this the eternal song through all the ages long. May Jesus Christ be praised. Just to finish with one scripture from Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.